Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and as the saying goes, life is good, but it can be better. Zack Snyder's Justice League is finally here, and throughout this breakdown I'm going to be pointing out some insane details that I haven't seen in any other videos. I've also just appeared on Prime Video UK's new show The Screen Test to discuss the best war movie of all time with chief film critic of The Independent Clarice Lockery and Joe Kim Wynn from The Cyber Nerds, so I'd love it if you headed over there after this. Anyway, our film ends with a lot of major teasers towards what could be coming down the line if Warner Brothers hashtag restore the Snyderverse, which go on yeah, do it. This includes a look at the War Machine Batmobile from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, which is one of the most iconic incarnations of the classic car. However, you might also notice that not only has Batman stopped killing, but he's also captured some of the mutant gang members from that comic. If we zoom in on the clip, we can actually see their infamous red visors on over their faces, making this for a cool little callback to the comics. That's not the only detail hidden away at the end either, and when Martian Manhunter is flying away from Bruce's lake house, the lake is itself is purposely shaped to look like the bat symbol. We can also make out the Hall of Justice which is currently being constructed. Teased at by Bruce, this actually appears as something that's destroyed in the Nightmare timeline. The hall is situated right in front of the Dark Side Omega symbol that Batman emerges in front of during BVS and thus we can gather that it was not only connected to the lake house but also the Batcave itself which he was hiding under during that timeline. Now in that scene we saw as the Dark Knight travelled to get the rock to star in Black Adam. This was a trap and he ended up being captured by the sons of Superman which led to his death. During this moment, Superman took his cowl off and held it in his hands which is what we see him doing in this clip, likely meaning that this happens after he murdered Bruce. I kind of feel like every time we go into the Nightmare version that it's a slightly altered timeline in which Bruce refused to lay down his life and that each incarnation we see showcases Bruce's death at the hands of Supes. In each one he's trying to get a certain object to defeat the character and this is why they have inconsistencies across them. Joker also discusses how many nightmare scenarios that the Dark Knight has created because he refuses to sacrifice himself and we know from behind the scenes info that Snyder was always planning to have the fate of the world rest on his shoulders in Justice League 2 and 3. You can also catch Kilowog here who is one of the high ranking members of the Green Lanterns. When passing through the rubble we can also make out the Joker's card that Mr J gave to Bruce at the end of the film as a way to cement the truce between the pair. Looks like this truce with Bruce was kept through the majority of the Nightmare timeline as we can also make it out as something that stuck to his gun in BVS. Now during Darkseid's rampage he shoots Omega Beams out of his eyes and these spell out the word end. However if you like to reach, and I don't mean reach arounds yeah, this also looks like a good spell out ZSJL aka Zack Snyder's Justice League. Other cool little details in the Nightmare Vision are that in the aftermath of Darkseid killing Lois, you can see the Robin suit that Dick Grayson had on when the Joker murdered him. Typically in the comics it was Jason Todd who fell victim to the Clown Prince of Crime, but Snyder changed it to Dick to explain why Grayson wasn't in this universe. It also explained why Bruce never took on another Robin, and hey, I guess Snyder, he, he just doesn't like sidekicks or dicks. Now we see the Batcave at several points throughout the movie and during one we can also make out the armoured bat suit in the background which Batman wore on BVS. Another thing you may notice is that this shot has been repurposed from Man of Steel. In that it came after Supes had just killed Zod and in doing so made it so he just destroyed his last connection to his old world. Luckily he was comforted by Lois who kept him from going off down a darker path. However, with Darkseid, the villain kills Lois and thus he is vulnerable once more which explains why he turned into a tyrant. It's not the only callback to Man of Steel either and there is a scene in which Clark pulls off a Christ-like pose above the earth. When he returns to the farm, there are also echoes of his childhood. Here we get a shot of the swing and an image of a Kent staring down from a window. A butterfly too appears at these moments and this plays a big part in the motif of Superman's journey. Gabriel Lebrana pointed out on Twitter that typically butterflies represent rebirth and flight and at this point Superman has returned from beyond the grave and he's ready to fly once more. In the film we see that there's a pregnancy test in Lois's drawer and Snyder did confirm that she was in fact bearing a child which is confirmed by the baby basket that she carries into the farm at the end of the film. In the theatrical cut this was a different object and Bruce also says congratulations by the way, cementing that they're going to be having a little baby, a little baby. 
And there's also a sign for suicide prevention, which is a very important message and is something that the Snyder Cut following have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for. It has the tagline, you are not alone, which is also a saying that popped up in Man of Steel, but here it takes on a whole new meaning. This is probably one of the best placements of a company in a film that I've ever seen, and I'm so glad that Snyder decided to include it. Now, Superman is a character that has a long, rich history in comics, film, and TV. Snyder wanted to reference this in his updated adaptation, and the scene in which Martha arrives and hugs Clark is also extremely similar to a moment in the Christopher Reeves movie. This is followed by a shot from inside the house, showcasing how things are like poetry, because they rhyme. Now, other carryovers from Man of Steel are that on the Kryptonian ship, we also see an open pod which Snyder stated would have belonged to Supergirl. During Man of Steel, Clark also rubbed the dust off the top of one of the capsules, and we can see this continuity detail carried across in the movie. In fact, Superman's quote unquote first flights are shot in extremely similar ways across both films. During this moment, we see Superman exit the craft in his suit with the doors opening slowly. He then kneels and using his intrinsic field, levitates the objects around him before taking off. This attention to detail and repetition is really well put together. And I think in the words of George Lucas, it's like poetry, they rhyme. I'll, st I'll, I'll stop doing that now. Now it's clear that Snyder and the actors develop little mannerisms for the characters to have and when Bruce exits a helicopter at the start of Batman v Superman, he steps off before it lands. This is something he also does in Justice League, showing how much attention to detail they were paying. Cyborg also does similar motions when his parents die and at both points in the film that this happens, he reaches out with one arm, almost trying to stop it from happening. Steppenwolf 2 shows up at the same spot as Darkseid did and similar to the villain he picks up dirt off the ground before smashing it to reveal the anti-life equation. It's like po- wait I said I wasn't gonna say it. Now when Superman goes back to the ship, this scene is very similar to when he first met his father and was given the grand tour. There's also a Kryptonian scout suit which we saw in Man of Steel. Now the black costume is of course in reference to the one that Kal-El wore upon coming back to life. However, the coloration goes far beyond that and Snyder recently told Esquire that this was also chosen because black is a color that absorbs sunlight. As Superman is powered by the sun, he flew up into the sky to supercharge himself before flying off to take on Steppenwolf. We can also see at the front of the ship is a flattened car and this is a byproduct of the gravitational force caused by the world engine. Now as for Steppenwolf, the Snyder Cut fills in the plot holes of how he found the location of the mother boxes. In Justice League, he managed to just find an island that was so well hidden, not even Diana knew how to get back to it, and a secret tower at the bottom of the ocean. However, in Zack Snyder's version, we see him using a spider-like interrogation device that sits over someone's face and pulls their thoughts out directly from their brains. In my opinion, this is actually the Snyderverse version of Starro the Conqueror, an alien that would attach to someone's head and then control their minds. The villain is rumoured to appear in the upcoming James Gunn Suicide Squad movie, so hopefully we see more of it soon, but also hashtag restore the Starro Snyderverse. Okay, and before we get into the next part of the video, just a quick thank you to all of you watching this for getting the channel to the point that I was asked to be on the new movie vodcast, The Screen Test, on Prime Video UK's YouTube channel. Hosted by that handsome devil, Jack Howard, the show has three guests fight it out every week to decide which movie or TV show is the best of the best in its genre. We talked Saving Private Ryan, which was my choice, The Hurt Locker and Apocalypse Now, and broke down each movie with their most memorable scenes, what had the biggest impact, and a lot more. It was a really, really fun episode, and you need to go over there right now and say I won. Otherwise, I'm going to kick off, yeah, I, s I swear to God, yeah, I'm going to kick off. Don't make me do it. Now, the episodes release every Wednesday at 5pm, and it's on the Prime Video UK channel, which is linked in the description right below. If you want to listen to it while you walk, it's also on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts at, so I'll see you over there after this. Now, throughout the film, there are some cool little cameos, and when Lois goes to get coffee at the start of the movie, you might notice Zack Snyder sitting in the window. Mark McClure also appears as a policeman at the Superman Memorial. In the theatrical cut, he showed up as a security guard for the prison, but here it's more linked in with Superman because the actor actually played Jimmy Olsen in the original Superman film series. Mark plays a character called Jerry, which is a reference to Jerry Siegel, one of the creators of The Man of Steel. 
I'm also sure, right, and, and, and don't quote me on this, I'm sure that the homeless guy that we see Linda Reed giving her tips to, I'm sure that's the Joss Whedon Nightmare Timeline version that we see in the theatrical cut. It's the same dog, I'm telling you, it's the same dog. Anyway, Linda Reed is also the name of a Golden Age character who was a love interest of Green Arrow, but Snyder has said there's no connection and this was purely coincidental. A huge thank you to Sai Niraj for pointing out that Cyborg is resurrected with object 61982. If we break these numbers down and assign them dates, they equal June 19th, 1982, which is the day that Cyborg was first introduced. Now shout out to Whitfist on Twitter for pointing out that during the Flash introduction scene, we can see a truck pass which has the name Gardner Fox on it. This was actually the name of the person who created the Flash, and there's also a sign which says reduced speed ahead, which is a nod to the speedster that of course lives in Central City. Flash states that he's fluent in Gorilla Sign Language, and this is likely setting up how the character will communicate with one of his big villains, Gorilla Grodd, should Warner Bros manage to go a movie without completely destroying everything. Another great easter egg appears in the intro when we visit the mascara and see where the mother box is held. On the roof of it is a star, and this symbol also appears on Diana's tiara. We also see Hippolyta's robe is similar in design to the armour of Asteria, who appeared with it in Wonder Woman 1984. Now throughout the movie, there are loads of little characters that pop up including Ares and Zeus, and also Jarl and Gur, who was a Green Lantern from the Golden Age that protected the space sector that Earth exists in. Now Snyder also plays some callbacks to other films in the movie, as not only is the scene in which Superman arrives, similar to how the T-Rex did in Jurassic Park, Joe Morton's character Silas also references his previous roles. Joe played Miles Dyson in Terminator 2, and this revealed that he was a top scientist at Cyberdyne, the company that created Skynet. However, it goes far beyond him just creating a machine that can destroy the world, and his death in JL also mirrors that movie. Miles killed himself with a remote control, and threw a switch which is similar to how Silas dies in Justice League. Hashtag spoiler alert. Anyway, that's the most obscure references that I could find. I will be doing a big, big, big breakdown on the film that covers it scene by scene. Just in the meantime, I wanted to get some of the more niche ones out of the way that I haven't seen mentioned in any other breakdowns or videos. I had people sending me stuff like, Martian Manhunter, he he's in the end, you might miss him. And I didn't miss the lad, yeah? I'm just doing the obscure ones, yeah? And count yourself bloody lucky I blurred your name out. Otherwise, yeah, me and the boys would be bloody coming for you. You do not want to see Ryan Airy when you do a mum joke about him. Now, if you want to see something included in the big breakdown I was talking about, then make sure you comment below and let me know. As a thank you for interacting with the video, you'll be entered into a prize draw on the 31st of March, in which we're giving away three copies of a Marvel 4K box set of your choice. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the film. The winners of last month's competition are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the ending of the film, or head over to my Amazon Prime UK video, which will be linked on screen right now. But out of the way, thank you for sitting through this, I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.